I went through so much post like leaving the church that we were at. People don't know like all the stuff that we went through. Like me and my wife, like we were rejected. Like we were talked about horribly. Mm-hmm. Like we were set up. <clears throat> like we were really set up and 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 the way that people treated us mm-hmm. from that church. Um it was really it was really challenging because it's like we're all we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. You're you're mad at me because I had an actual authentic experience with God. And the thing is, I went we went to this church in Charlotte and it wasn't even the, the church experience and everything like that that broke me. It was the prayer of this Caucasian lady with tattoos, not her, but <laughs> <laughs> but it was her prayer that broke me mm. because it was like, why am I so judgmental? Mm. Why why am I so angry all the time? Why am I trying to pick a fight with everyone all the time? It's like Jesus didn't go around picking fights with people. The Pharisees came to him. Yeah. <laughs> he was out doing what? His father's work. Right. And the Pharisees challenged him on on, on those things. Mm-hmm. And it's like when when the when everything was removed from my eyes, and we'll we'll get back onto struggling to struggling to faith. When everything was removed from my eyes, I I could see, and even now I see where God is taking the church. And I feel like he's taking it to where we have to focus back on him. That we have to put the we have to put him first in our in our church. I know we put God first everywhere. We have Jesus is first, and we live God first. Yeah, we do a lot of lip service, but, but right, but it's not it's not literal. Mm-mm. It's not literal. No, you don't it's, know how I know. You don't know how I know. How you know? Because <laughs> I went to church for a long time, long time, and was not delivered, healed, or set free. Mm-hmm. No, you are made to feel good. Mm-hmm. It's like a B twelve shot in your booty mm-hmm. once a week. <laughs> And like, get on out there, get Captain, on out there, but right. it doesn't actually put you or equip you yeah. to encounter change. Like there's a cleansing of the vessels that we must do. Yeah. Right. But there's also an equipping of mm-hmm. the process of how to cleanse the vessel. Yeah. And there is a certain level of uh, deliverance that goes in with that it because is. you can't dabble out here in the world and all the things that are dabbled in mm-hmm. and not be driven by a demon. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> So this is funny how we met like, no, seriously at, at, at church. Like, yeah, well, because that was uh, how we remet, right? How we remet because we was in the production studio and then he was like, I know you from somewhere. And I was the refuge. It was we in a cleaning it out. It was right. It was clean out. And like, we can like, I, I know you from somewhere. And I was like, mm-hmm. I know you from somewhere. Like your face looks familiar. Yeah. It's like, but I just can't put it together. And, I, and I'm not going to sit there and stare at you because, like, that's creepy. I was sitting there staring at you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, it was like, I know her from somewhere, but I was like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about it. I'll just, it'll come up whenever. And then it was, I, oh, because I, was, I, wore wear, the, yeah, I wore the, I wore the hoodie with the Kestra Heights women's um, hoodie on. He was like, that's where I know you from. He was like, I sat beside you on the bench for years. Yeah. <laughs> it was so weird, though. It was so weird. Like, for one, that time in my life was actually, I know we were going to talk about that time. because That time in my life was so different because that was part of my struggle with my faith. Like, wow. when okay. I was in that, that life, of, or I don't say in that life, but that, that time period of my life. Because my mom was sick. I was, you know, trying to help out and do whatever I can for the community, but also helping out at the school. Um, in school full-time mm-hmm. at North Carolina Central and also working two full-time jobs. How in the world was I able to do all that? And then come home and be a full-time caretaker and have to coach little girls and whatnot. It was a mess. Like, yeah. <laughs> But coaching was my outlet. Mm-hmm. That's where I was like, all right, I cannot focus on all the other stuff that's going on in my life. And I loved it. I had no idea. Yeah, right? Not I a like, clue. Not a clue. Uh-uh. I still don't know how old you are. <laughs> and so it's just kind of I still been don't on, know how old you are. I have no idea. So I didn't even know what you may have been up against. But at the time, I am, this was what, like 2010? 2011? Yeah, 2011. Yeah, and so I'm very gay (laughs) (laughs) at this point. (laughs) I was uh, very deep into that. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that was even prior to me coming out to my family, though. But um, there were just people in my life during that season that they were safety. Yeah. And that's literally how we met, which is crazy. So that means we were were in the pits. Mm Mm-hmm. 
separately. Yeah. But still. It's mm. just so weird. Because, like, the church that I was going to at the time, like, we preached heavy against homosexuality. I bet you did. Like, heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, so, at the time, that's why I was like, I'm struggling with my faith because I'm going to do all these different things. But at the same time, I'm, you know, a part of this church. Mm-hmm. And, you know... I, I I knew you at the time, yeah. but I didn't like know you know you. But you had to know by looking at. Yeah, I mean, obviously, okay. uh-huh. yeah. But I mean, I've I've always been the way of I'm not going to judge. You mm-hmm. know, I'm going to you know love people because you know you're people. So it's like I, I've never had. I, it was a dichotomy for me because okay. I was really going through a lot in my personal life, and then <laughs> he said, "I ain't got time. I ain't got time. All right, I ain't got time. All right, I don't care about what you're doing." And I think that's one of the parts of me that kind of like I grieve a little bit about because mm-hmm. it's like we can get in life where there's so much going on, and we just miss those opportunities. Because I didn't, I didn't really consider myself a minister, yeah, but I was doing a lot of ministry stuff. I can tell you that if you would have come at me during that season, oh yeah, it would have been. It would have not been good. Oh yeah, it would have not been good. But that's the thing. Like I have, I think, I think that's why God allowed it to be that way. Mm-hmm. Because like I learned, like even taking that approach was not the strong, was not was not the best approach to approach you know a person yeah. in a lifestyle. So it was like I learned how to just I won't say live or exist with it but i just learned how to just ignore it yeah yeah that's the word like i just learned how to just i i look over that like you cool people and that's that and so fast forward all the way to what two years ago (laughs) this would have been this would have been my fifth year at that church so uh 2019 yeah so fast forward all the way to then well, I won't even, I won't go in there in 2019. It had to be 2020. It was 2021. We started going in 2021. We started going there in 2021. Like what month? Um, September of 2021. Couldn't I didn't start serving until like early spring of 2022. I'm, I'm sure. This year would be three years. That video, oh, that video came out in The video came out in 2022. Okay, so yeah, I started going in 2019 and I got involved in 2021. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, because her and I decided to Mm -hmm. go our separate ways in 2021. Right. In the spring. Right. And so that would have been the fall. Right. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) A whirlwind, right? Yeah. And so so the way that we got connected then was like I was leading production team. And you were interested in the production team. Mm -hmm. Very gifted and very talented. And you came in and was just one of the best camera operators I've ever had in my life. Like the best... (laughs) Like the shots, the angles that she was getting is just incredible. Like anyone can attest to that. Like that's the okay. best. That's enough. You know. No, I'm serious. Keep like you know, sh- just girl, take the take the praise. But, <laughs> <laughs> but and it, it was like once I wore that hoodie, that's when it all came back. And I was like, my God, like how did I not f- remember that? But I think it's like I said because of where we are, where we were in life at that yeah. time, and like so much has happened, it had transpired between then, and so by the time. You get to a place where... You well, you don't remember those people that you right. only knew for a short, short stint time. in yeah. that kind of life. Yeah. Because, I mean, your early 20s versus your 30s, mm-hmm. very different. Very different. Vastly different. Like, yeah. so much went down from that till, what, 10, what was that, 10 years? Yeah, pretty much. Literally 10 years. So, I mean, I, I've come across so many people mm-hmm. in 10 years. So, I was, <laughs> so, it's like, yeah. But I knew, I know, I'm, I always say this, and it's, it's true. I'm better with faces than I am with names. Okay. Because I, I knew your face for mm-hmm. somewhere. It was like, but well, where can I pinpoint it to? Right. And I had and no idea. And I just idea no idea. You wore the hoodie. Right? <laughs> we would have been still <laughs> trying to figure it out. <laughs> How do we know each other? <laughs> yeah. You know, no, I don't, I don't really know faces or names. Yeah. So, there's that. Yeah. <laughs> there's that. I remember faces, but I did not do that. What's interesting, though, is just how God's so intentional. He's so, yeah. Because he knew there's two people that he did that. Mm-hmm. And one of them was uh, one of the women that went on the India trip with me. Mm-hmm. I met her literally in 2010. We were both having BC days. Like mm-hmm. we weren't anywhere <laughs> near the church. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's the same. It's yeah. He just, he made a couple connections very early on, mm-hmm. right before I came out publicly. You're right. And that we're going to be used to mm. tie me back. Right. After he pulls me back. Right. And so it's just, he's so into He's so intentional. so intentional. He's so intentional. And so, like, even stuff like that, that helps solidify my faith now. Yeah. Because I was raised in it. Mm-hmm. I was raised around it, but it wasn't really, 
it wasn't an active thing. It was a habit. Mm -hmm. It was a routine. Right. There wasn't any fruit of the faith mm -hmm. that I was raised in. It was all knowledge. Mm -hmm. I was graded on it. I went to a Christian school, but I didn't, nothing yeah. seeped in. It, it was just head knowledge. Yeah. And so head knowledge and faith isn't the same thing. Yeah. Oh, that's good. It's just not because you can know a lot of things. I know a lot of people, mm. but I don't know them. Yeah. You know, like mm -hmm. I don't know their character. I don't know their nature. Yeah. And so I feel like that's probably would be my first level of mm -hmm. dissecting. Well, what is faith? Well, are you talking about a belief system that moves you? Or are you talking about something that you know about? Yeah. Like so what, you, what did faith look like for you then? As BC a, days. As, oh, BC yeah. days? Yeah. Um, it looked like, honestly, me taking cherry picking out of this that I knew well mm -hmm. um, and creating my own counterfeit gospel mm -hmm. that comforted me in the lifestyle that I chose mm -hmm. and uh, taking the parts I liked and throwing away the parts I didn't. Yeah. And I mean, that's where, that's where our world is now. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, Jesus wouldn't say that. Yeah, he yeah, did, though. He, did. he, really he totally did. did. I'm so <laughs> sorry. I know you hate that, but he did. He did say it, yeah. Yeah, and he's going to stick to what he said. Yeah. Like, I uh, I posted something the other week, and, ooh, people didn't like it. Oh, yeah, I saw that. People didn't like it. And they're like, Jesus wouldn't tell me to do Jesus wouldn't turn my, his face from me. Yeah, he would. Yeah, he would. There's literally words for that. Yeah. But it's like this, this way of thinking, and I, I empathize with him. Mm -hmm. I do, because you don't create counterfeit gospels mm -hmm. out of a place without being in a place of desperation. Mm. Let's be real. Yeah. Because what we're trying to do, we're trying to salvage as much of our identity as we can. Yeah. Without sacrificing our eternity. Ooh. And, but there's also, you got to be like, okay, sorry. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I got, I'm getting people talking like, your children are going to do evil on the earth. And I was like, yeah, oh, I <laughs> How first of all, I got to get married first. Who even says, don't talk to me about my kids. Anyway, right. it's, just, it was, it's just so crazy because, right. but I empathize so much because I was there. Right. I was them. Because mm -hmm. you don't want to say how I feel is sending me to hell. And mm -hmm. so I'll change this before I change me. Mm. Because yeah. I don't know how. Right. And that's, I feel like as, as far as the place of faith I was in when we met, mm -hmm. it was like, there was a lot of, hard lines, mm -hmm. but there wasn't anybody actually walking transformed. Mm. And see, so I was raised in a family in an, in, in church establishment. So let me yeah. say it like that. Free original free will Baptist. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, that's, that's country. Mm. And the school <laughs> I went to was fundamental Baptist. Mm. And if you know anything about fundamental Baptists, they were not great. Right. Okay. <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> they, they just like masquerade as, as church mm -hmm. people and they just run abuse. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, this is it. It's the truth. And so it's just, it was, I don't know, it's just all over the place. And so faith, I was surrounded by it, mm -hmm. but nobody was changed by it. Mm. And so we only talked about the sins that didn't affect mm. us. Yeah. Okay. I literally, this true story. Mm -hmm. All right. So they made me go to a Christian school. Mm -hmm. They, as in my parents, like they're my <laughs> slave handlers. Anyway, <laughs> but they made me. They made me. And I remember when I was about four, four or five years old, my dad stepped out of my mom. Mm -hmm. I was present mm -hmm. that night. He was outside talking to the phone, whatever. I remember a few years later, I'm in Christian school. I'm reading this Bible, King James only. Yeah, okay, right, because right, so that's it. That's, that's the it. only version. Apparently, it's King James, not King Jesus. <laughs> right, right. King and James or die. I if remember, you don't read that NIV, like you going to hell. <laughs> I have an I ESV, and it's like, <laughs> what do I do wrong? <laughs> what did I do wrong? Like, am I uh, right, Jesus? But I remember reading in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. uh, what you're supposed to do when mm. someone commits adultery. Mm. And I went to my mom oh, and I was, too, I was though. ticked. I was, was like, we, that's it. <laughs> I was like, you know what the Bible says we're supposed to do when someone commits adultery. She was like, what? I was like, stone them. <laughs> and not that I wanted to stone my dad. Don't get me wrong. I'm really glad that we didn't have to kill my dad. But I was just like, at what point, yeah. at what point do we actually abide? Yeah. And it just continued, and it continued, and I loved, mm, they loved to talk about the gays in church growing mm -hmm. up. Yeah. And they loved to Even now. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, but y'all don't realize that that's not the only immorality? Keep going. You know? And so Keep it was going. just constant of that, and so it's like the things that they for, they were forcing me to eat, they didn't mm -hmm. like how I would regurgitate it. Yeah. Because I would just, like, it, truth is 
more full spectrum than yeah. that. Yeah. And so this this way of but see, this will happen. The same thing that I did in my eight, late teens and 20s as far as cherry picking, mm-hmm. I did that because that's how I was taught. Yeah. And nobody wants to talk about that. Yeah. Nobody wants to talk about the church yeah. creates these strange identities. And then we wonder why everyone's messed up and, and struggling with faith. Yeah. Because faith in what? Mm-hmm. Is it they faith in taught. a denomination? Mm-hmm. Is it faith in a man? Is it faith in a ministry? Or is it actually a faith in this book? Preach. Preach. I'm just saying. No, you preaching. You preaching. I, you preaching better than you preaching better than they saying they man. I'm like, just, but and it's funny because like you're you're talking about you being in the gay lifestyle. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> this is gonna be really hard for a lot of people to hear this. I grew up in the church. Yep. I was churchified to the day I die. Like, I'm churchy. I'm churchy, churchy, churchy. But I was a hypocrite. Mm. The biggest hypocrite. On my way to hell. But yet, preaching against homosexuals. Yeah. Talking against homosexuals. And, like, everything that you're laying out, everything that you're saying, is the exact same lifestyle that I was living, but I was in the church. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and it's like people don't realize just how much how broad sin is. It's not just narrowed to just one specific sinful event. It's not narrowed to just one specific sinful act. No, it's broad. Yeah, like Deuteronomy is it's a big book. There's over six hundred <laughs> laws, and those are sins yeah. that people commit. And it's like when we look at I know for me personally when I look internally at myself. Like, I grieve those years when I was like that because not only, and I talked about this on um, on a episode, podcast episode a long time ago, how God broke me from having a religious spirit. And when he did that, it was like, it was like the, that Paul or the Saul when he was converted to Paul mm-hmm. and God literally mm-hmm. ripped the scales off his eyes. Come on. Because... I was so into the church stuff. I was so into making sure that, well, it's okay if I sleep with this girl because it's a girl. Mm-hmm. You know? still in it's still in the It's still in his, it's still in, you know, mm-hmm. it's still in his plan, Yeah, you know, but it's still premarital sex. Come on. Like, oh, it's okay if I smoke this weed. Yeah, we're going to go there. Come on. <clears throat> like, it's okay if I do that, like, but that's not part of his will. Man, it's okay if I cuss this person out, you know. It's okay if I, you know, say some cuss words, you know. God, you know, God knows my heart, mm-hmm. you know. But at the same time, and this is one of the things that I'm really telling myself now. One of the reasons why <laughs> I stopped doing campus ministry, campus ministry for those who who knew me at the time, um, when I had transferred and went to Central North Carolina Central University, um, I started doing campus ministry because I started at Barton College and I was heavy in it. Everybody knew me. Mm-hmm at Barton as being a campus minister. Everybody knew. I was like, oh, that's Pastor TJ, whatever, like, whatever. We call me Bishop, all that stuff. But when I got to Central, I started <laughs> I started dating my, my wife. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm not saying that she calls me to sin, but she calls me to stumble. I just, <laughs> I'm messing. I'm messing. <laughs> but I remember we were at this Bible study. Not my wife, but I was at the Bible study um, at Central with the campus ministry people at the time. And I remember the Bible study was so powerful and it was so heavy to where we were praying for people. And I remember, <laughs> I remember God telling me to pray to this one specific guy about sex. Mm. And I, I prayed and I felt horrible I afterwards bet. because I'm sitting here praying for him to come out of a lifestyle that I'm secretly in. Mm-hmm. I'm praying for him to be delivered from this lifestyle that I'm still in. Right. And not only am I the biggest hypocrite right now in this moment, but I felt so much conviction in my heart. I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> because for one, I wasn't willing to give up <laughs> that. It's your honor. I wasn't. Like, I wasn't. And yeah. we didn't. <laughs> and no matter how hard we tried. Okay. But I wasn't willing to give that up for the sake of this. Mm. It's, the sake, it's the same thing mm-hmm. with any type of sexual right. perversion. Yeah. It's, it's like all when the it's same. when it's hooked, <laughs> when it's in you, yeah. like you people don't understand just how hard that sexual demon is mm-hmm. everybody just think oh it's just demonic to homosexual no it's it's a stronghold 
to anyone who is willing to lay down their life for that Mm -hmm. than this. Right. You got people who are married and have porn addictions. They have a whole wife in the bed with them that they could sleep with. Mm -hmm. But they decide to pull this phone up, pull up Pornhub or wherever website. I know Twitter because, you know, I have some friends that told me, it was like, yeah, I go to Twitter for mine. It's like... <clears throat> we'll go to all these different sites and find it mm-hmm. instead of being with the one that God puts you with right next to you, to you in your bed will. Yeah. And it's like, we will, we will rather have more faith in that lifestyle. And it's not just talking about that. It's talking yeah, about yeah, like, yeah. even like with the churchy folk like me, like mm-hmm. we, we put so much faith perversion in our lifestyle. Perversion. I don't it's perversion. Perver- right. You still going to hell. Like period. <laughs> like, you yeah. can you can you can say, oh, I'm in. Ch- I grew up in church all my life. You know, I did this, I did that. And it's like, oh, that's just this. No, there's a lot of people who are just like me, mm-hmm. who are just like me. Right. There's a lot of people who are now in the place that I was then. Right. And it wasn't until God had to literally rip the scales off my eyes to show me, like, no, TJ, you've been doing it wrong this whole time. Mm-hmm. And I, and the calling on your life, and this goes for you too, the calling on your life it far exceeds. The sacrifices <laughs> and the things like, and I feel like we have to get to the place where we make this our God, the word of God, our God, and not our lifestyles, not our choices, not, you know, for me, it was I'm trying to measure up and I'm trying to be accepted by religious people. I'm trying to be accepted for my calling. I want you to see me as a pastor. I want you to see me as a preacher, mm-hmm. but that's not what God wants for us. He wants us to see ourselves the way that he sees us. He wants us to see ourselves in his image mm-hmm. because we are what? His children. Right. I mean, that's if you <clears throat> receive him. Let's. <laughs> it's a lot of people out here saying, I'm a child of God. I'm a child no of God. What, no. no, 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 no. no. You that's have to based define on that. reception. <laughs> <laughs> to all that did receive him, yeah. he gave the right. Because, I look, this is what I'm battling on the daily. Mm-hmm. You can't tell me that. Who are you? I'm not. I am Terry. That mm-hmm. is who I am. <laughs> that is who I but am. But I have this, mm-hmm. and I know what it says. And I'm secure in that. I mean, that's just it because, okay, and here I want to say this to, to immorality and impurity. Mm-hmm. Because if, okay, because of the family I came from. Mm-hmm. All right, my mama has six brothers. Mm-hmm. They all, they all Christians. Okay. <laughs> Bible been thumped. Mm -hmm. All right. (laughs) Yeah. They threw stones at you. I mean, they made it known. Uh All right. But they also uh, spec law. Mm -hmm. And see, Mm -hmm. one, that doesn't say don't. It just says remove. Yeah. Remove yours first Mm -hmm. so you can better remove that one. It Mm -hmm. doesn't say mind yours and don't Mm -hmm. touch theirs. Mm -hmm. That's true. And the way that God, the way that Jesus, like, praised that, he got to remove the log. Yeah. In your own eye uh-huh. to move the speck out of someone else's. He's still telling you to go get that speck. <laughs> okay. Y'all got to start reading the Bible. Please read the Bible. <laughs> uh, but, okay, so in that lifestyle that I was in, though, if you would, if, if he would have delivered me from homosexuality years ago, mm-hmm. there would have still been so many things in my life that mm-hmm. still would have kept me out of heaven. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's the thing is so because people are so they're so like stuck yeah. on sexuality being the thing. Yeah, if you take it away, you still have a problem with God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's get real. Yes, please, right. please, because I'm about sick of responding <laughs> or even just praying about <laughs> <laughs> some you just don't respond to. Right. Exactly. Uh, you know, zero followers, zero posts. I'm not responding <laughs> to you. Um, get behind You're me, nobody. Satan. Right? Uh, You're no. a bot. <laughs> exactly. You just came here to, to stir up strife. But I think that that is when we're talking about if we, how to deal with struggling faith, if mm-hmm. we bring it back to the Bring topic, it all the way back. An understanding that religion Mm -hmm. is not faith. Mm -hmm. Religion cannot save you. Mm. Jesus told his disciples, beware the leaven of Herod Mm -hmm. and the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. Meaning the government can't save you. The establishment can't save you. Mm -hmm. But neither can religion, baby. Neither can. Like, you're going to have to let go of this idea. I don't care if you go to church. I don't care if your church will marry you. Mm. I don't care. Mm. I promise you, on Judgment Day, the Lord's not going to say, can we get the bylaws for this person's <laughs> church? Nope. That's ridiculous. That is stupid. But that's legit. Uh-huh, that's it's, what they believe. My church mm-hmm. says it's fine. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Your church is wrong, too. Your church is leading you to hell. Hello? Mm-hmm. 
we have to separate faith from religion. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. Because that ain't going to do it. It's so funny that you say that because, you know. I don't, Expound, I don't, sir. I don't know if you are aware of what's been going on in the church world. I do you no? I spend my days with Jesus. <laughs> that's it. That's the best place to be. You ain't lying. Let me tell you something. That's the best place to be. Like I, I literally fast from social media to like twelve o'clock every day. Okay. Like I don't get on into. I was like, okay, that's my time with me, God, and work. Like <laughs> I'm focused, and I, and even after then, I was like, I'd be on there, and I don't be on there that much. But so this week, <laughs> Terrence knows exactly where I'm going with this. So this week, a gospel artist went on a secular platform. And said that the church is whack. Okay. Talking about it's Ty Tribbett. Yeah, okay. yeah. I don't see, know. See? I, you know, I don't you, know who that is. You didn't but know, I, but you I knew. I've seen it on YouTube. <laughs> you seen it, right? And the things that you're describing are all the things that he was talking about. <laughs> but people have put it into this perspective that he's talking about all churches, or he's talking about every church. No, there are good churches. Mm-hmm. There are really good churches. And there are some messed up, I ain't even going to say it, churches. And those churches are whack. Like, period. The institutions, the systems, the structures, and the things, the bylaws. I just talked about how, you know, how I was super religious and all that stuff. And then all that, and all that came off of me. Like, all that stuff was whack. Like, all that stuff, won't it won't, it won't edify my soul. Like, I was still doing the same things. I was still cussing, still drinking, still smoking, still you know, mm-hmm. sleeping around. And what, I won't say sleeping around, but sleeping with my um, wife, who was my girlfriend. It's like I was still doing all these things. Right. And the fact that I was still doing all these all these things and still in the church, it's like, what does that tell you about not just the church that I was at, but just what my perception of faith was because of the church where I was at? Mm-hmm. And I'm not coming for the church. I'm not coming for that church. I'm really not. Because <clears throat> I literally just posted a video saying I'm not in the business of tearing down stuff. I put the wrong caption up and I said, I'm in the business of tearing down, which is so weird. But, <laughs> I mean, so, but look, it's the truth. It's the truth. Need to be tore some down. things need to be tore down. Some things need to be exposed. And I'm not, and I'm, I'm not exposed in this church. I'm not exposing anything. I'm just saying that lifestyle that I was in, I knew it was right. Like you, you could tell me I was dying that day. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to, I'm going to heaven. Like, no, bro. I probably gonna bust hell wide open because I was such a hypocrite. And see, I thought I was going to heaven the whole time (laughs) because I wanted to. Mm -hmm. It was on strictly on the basis of I wanted to go to heaven, so Mm -hmm. I was I was going to heaven. Mm -hmm. My God, my God, my God! Thank you for mercy. Thank you, Jesus. (laughs) It's the truth. Yeah, it's the truth. So, like, so going back to struggling faith, which we talk about a lot. Like I ain't, even, I ain't even speak my piece on Tatra Bet stuff. I, ain't even, I don't even want to. I'll talk about that on another video. I actually did talk about it, but I don't say the Lord convicted me, but my wife was like, don't post it. it <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Cat Williams now, just sitting here, just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, just in here rocking and, ro- and rubbing my legs now. <laughs> But um, religion, literally, if, if your faith is in religion, mm-hmm. you're always going to struggle with it. Always. I'm sorry. Always. And, and the, no, I'm actually going to piggyback off of that because for me, it was more of having faith in my denomination. Come on. Than anything. You know what? Tell the truth, TJ. Set the people free. I'm telling I'm, the truth. I, mm, like, that's the truth. Isn't like, there are 30, over 33,000 denominations in America. Is, which is so weird. You know what that means? That means there are over 33,000 opinions of man that mm-hmm. says what this says, says or not. Mm-hmm. Are you kidding? Mm-hmm. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. I, if, somebody, if somebody was starting Axe Church, I'd be very happy. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> Invite me to your Axe Church. <laughs> it's like Holy Spirit do what only Holy Spirit can do. Right. And, it, and it's funny because, you know, I feel like where God is taking, you know, us in, in the realm of um, the Spirit and the church in the latter days is to really, you know, center back on him. Like, I've been, and I, I'm not just, I, I don't dabble in the prophetic. I really don't. But the Lord speaks to me sometimes. And so, <laughs> and so it's like I see things spiritually. Mm-hmm. I see where things are going. I really do see, like, God, COVID-19 really exposed a lot. <laughs> exposed a lot of churches. It exposed a lot of man-made philosophies and ideals. 
and it exposed a lot within me. Like it changed, it changed a lot. Like, and that was before COVID mm -hmm. hit when I was, whatever, when I was dealing with all of that because 2020 hit and COVID hit, I was already like, you know, I'm, I'm on fire for Jesus, you know, mm -hmm. I was not, <clears throat> but there was, <laughs> but there was so much hell that I had to endure. Mm hmm. Like, I posted that video on TikTok, and it got a lot of views and a lot of likes, and I was just very surprised because it's like, oh, my gosh. And someone posted, like, this is timely because of the Ty Tribet stuff. But it's it's the truth. I went through so much post, like, leaving the church that we were at. People don't know, like, all the stuff that we went through. Like, me and my wife, like, we were rejected. Like, we were talked about horribly. Like, we were set up. <clears throat> Like we were really set up, and 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 the way that people treated us mm -hmm. from that church, um, it was really it was really challenging, because it's like we're all we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. You're you're mad at me because I had an actual authentic experience with God. And the thing is, I went we went to this church in Charlotte, and it wasn't even the, the church experience and everything like that that broke me. It was the prayer of this. Caucasian lady with tattoos, not her, but <laughs> but it was her prayer that broke me mm. because it was like, why am I so judgmental? Mm. Why why am I so angry all the time? Why am I trying to pick a fight with everyone all the time? It's like Jesus didn't go around picking fights with people. The Pharisees came to him. Yeah. <laughs> he was out doing what his father's work, right? And the Pharisees challenged him on on, on those things, mm -hmm. and it's like when when the when everything was removed from my eyes, and we'll we'll get back onto struggling on struggling faith. But when everything was removed from my eyes, I I could see, and even now I see where God is taking the church, and I feel like He's taking it to where we have to focus back on Him. That we have to put the we have to put him first in our in our church. I know we put God first everywhere. We have Jesus is first, and we live God first. Yeah, we do a lot of lip service, but, but right, but it's not it's not literal. Mm -mm. It's not literal. No, you don't it's, know how I know. You don't know how I know. How you know? Because <laughs> I went to church for a long time, long time, and was not delivered here to set free. Mm -hmm. No, you are made to feel good. Mm -hmm. It's like a B twelve shot in your booty once a week. <laughs> And like, get on out there, get Captain, on out there, but right. it doesn't actually put you or equip you yeah. to encounter change. Like there's a cleansing of the vessels that we must do. Yeah. Right. But there's also an equipping of mm -hmm. the process of how to cleanse the vessel. Yeah. And there is a certain level of uh, deliverance that goes in with that it because is. you can't dabble out here in the world and all the things that are dabbled in mm -hmm. and not be driven by a demon. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like there are things that I have very much enjoyed that only the kingdom of hell enjoys mm -hmm. because as a whole set free person, I'm like, ew, mm -hmm. I would never, Why would I? but I did mm -hmm. because I wasn't like, you know, you are not your own. Mm -hmm. You're not your own other way either. Right. Like every it's, everything's a, uh, what's that word I'm looking for? A pendulum. Yeah, there it is. If it exists mm -hmm. in the heavenlies, it exists in, mm -hmm. in the demonic. It does. Mm -hmm. And we got we got to start getting real with that. But see, the church I was we didn't talk about. We actually we not not only we didn't talk about demons. We didn't talk about the Holy Spirit. Oh really? Like somebody put the Holy Spirit in jail. Well, you ain't gonna talk about it much in the in the Baptist church. I grew up Baptist church too. We didn't talk about Holy Spirit. Like all he did was there to comfort you. No, yeah. bro, he's there to actually change your life. To change your life. To change that messed up part of you. You want to know? I'm a mess. I'm a mess with you for a second. What's up? So there's this show on Amazon, I think. And it's like drive through history, mm -hmm. the Gospels. Mm -hmm. I started watching Acts through Revelation. Anyway, this man's like going over all and all the current day mm -hmm. those spaces and he's going through the bible mm -hmm. and he was talking about the beatitudes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how jesus was like you've heard this mm -hmm. but i tell you this. he is upping the ante yeah and i was like how come we miss that everybody's mm -hmm. like jesus is law mm -hmm. no jesus came and said the laws that you thought were hard to follow mm -hmm. I'm going to double it, <laughs> but I'm going to give you my spirit to do it. Mm -hmm. And so this idea that we can live like Jesus without his spirit mm -hmm. is detrimental. Yeah. And so we have a church on every corner mm -hmm. and we have got so many unsaved people. Why? Mm. Because ain't nobody using the spirit. Mm. Ain't nobody using the spirit. We love spirits. Yeah. Okay. If you leave your church house congregation mm -hmm. and you hit up 
the ABC store on mm-hmm. the way home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we know you love the Spirit. Somebody, mm-hmm. we got to give them the Holy Spirit. All right. <laughs> well, this is mainly because the Holy Spirit is missing from the churches. That's it. People don't want the Holy Spirit in their church. No, because the Holy Spirit will make you change. It'll make you change and it'll make the service go longer. Ah, come on, TJ. <laughs> Come on, TJ. Come on. It's the truth. It's the very it's big the truth. truth. You cannot produce the spirit. Can't. The spirit has to be introduced. Mm. You can't produce him. If you produ- No, you're not producing him. You're producing you. Mm-hmm. That's it. I'm That's sorry. That's the truth. I can't play that. Y'all want to know, my life was changed under a tent at night in mm. a m- little tiny town of Macclesfield, North Carolina. Mm. The Holy Spirit, there was no agenda. There was no time. There was no lights. There was no performance. There wasn't even there wasn't mm. even any good singing. But honestly, <laughs> it, it doesn't spirit. matter because the Spirit of God fell and he took out everything that I had been imprisoned by. Mm-hmm. And this ain't like, this ain't a long time ago. Mm-hmm. This was last year mm. because I had gone to religion. Mm-hmm. I had laid down my whole life mm-hmm. because I wanted to belong. Mm-hmm. And that's a whole nother thing right there. Yeah. There's a prostitution of belonging. Oof. We make people think that belonging. Terry. I'm sorry. Terry, you got to repeat that. I don't even know what I said. That's how the Holy Spirit works through me. (laughs) (laughs) Says a prostitution of belonging. Yeah. And so we we invite everybody. We invite, and mind you, the Holy Spirit does the drawing. Mm. So anytime you have to have a marketing Mm. budget to invite people to you, that ain't that ain't the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will draw them. Mm -hmm. You don't need $10,000 a month on your Facebook ads. Right. Jesus said, if I be lifted up. Bye bye. Okay. I'll draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Okay. And so <clears throat> that was that was it. And that's enough for some people. That's enough. And so it got me personal experience. This is just my I ain't come for nobody. But it was like, you belong here. Mm-hmm. What is a person with in this homosexual lifestyle in the Bible Belt of America? What mm. do they struggle with? Mm. Belonging. Belonging. Hello. Identity. Their family yeah. doesn't even want them. Yeah. Okay. So you t- you tell me, welcome home. Mm. We're family now. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. So I know that in order to be a part of this more, I know that I'm probably going to need. So I'm gonna do this mm-hmm. before anybody here knows my thing. We're gonna handle this accordingly. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we lay this down. Mm-hmm. This is talking about struggling faith. This is it. Because mm-hmm. you thought it was before I came out. No, the hardest, the most struggling with my faith ever did was after I came back yeah. to Jesus. Mm. I know. I know. So I saw I, it. Like, I laid it down. You I watched this. I watched You watched this process go. And so I laid it down. And I'm like, oh, God, okay, finally I can belong. Because that's what happened is that the, the scale shifted. Mm-hmm. We, both of us, felt the desire. We were like, we can belong to something bigger than just each other. Yeah. So, all right, here, you can have this. Mm-hmm. And then what we found is that religion, Doesn't save. Re- there's no faith. Religion mm-hmm. can't do it because the same people that were your family, they abandoned you just like mm-hmm. your last family did. Yeah. Because unless you are uh, making their advertisement budget, they don't have to spend as much this month because we have a strong story that will really, mm-hmm. but it's, I know you. It's t- going, it's tar. Going, it's going. so yeah. hard uh-huh. because I don't want. I am very. I was bitter. Yeah. Okay, and I've had to do a lot of work. Yeah. To let that go. Yeah. But what I also hate is that I was okay. I'm, let me tell you this. Mm-hmm. Let me let me put it this way. It's not gonna sound like a parable. But Off the record, on the record, it don't matter. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> to do so there is somebody that I am a friend with. Mm-hmm. Loosely. Mm-hmm. Um, she was inspired by what she had heard mm-hmm. about me. She, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Identifies as trans. Mm-hmm. She thinks she's a boy. Mm-hmm. She looks like a girl, but it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Um, the delusion. Yeah. She's been going to church for almost a year and a half now. Mm-hmm. Going to a church for mm-hmm. a year and a half. And they welcomed her. Mm-hmm. Welcome home. Mm-hmm. Let's her serve. Mm-hmm. All the things. Mm-hmm. And then when she felt the the draw to belong more mm-hmm. through water baptism. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So we don't think it's a good idea for you to get water baptized. Well, why not? Mm. Because serving the church is our kingdom purpose. Mm. So we can do that. So I can have <laughs> a king. I can walk out give. my kingdom purpose. Right. So I can help you mm-hmm. with God's ministry. Mm-hmm. But now you're telling me that God doesn't. Like what I'm doing? Mm-hmm. Y'all get that? Do you get mm-hmm. how detrimental that is yeah. to somebody? Yeah. Yeah. 
yo, we got to stop. Yeah. We got to stop. We got to stop because yeah. the, the church ain't it. it, ain't it. If, mm. if the spirit is not there saying, come to me, mm-hmm. lay that down. Yeah. No, no, no. Get him out of your church. Yeah. Get him out of your church. Mm-hmm. And see, and I posted something like that yesterday because mm-hmm. the Lord has been pressing that on me. It, it's the truth. It, th- but that's but that's how that's, that's literally how Paul ran we his church. have scriptures mm-hmm. that say, get rid of them. Mm-hmm. Why? Because mm-hmm. if you are thinking that you can go against this mm-hmm. and be a part of the church, you are making it hard for other people who actually are looking for a solid faith. Yeah. Faith in God challenges everything. Everything. And he, that's it, but he's so good. Like yeah. he's not asking for anything that he's not going to give you. The power to do, to overcome. Yeah. Or more than what you currently have. Yeah. I think we miss that. I think I think that we actually don't think that God changes people, mm. and so we're in afraid. the church, yeah, because we think that it takes a lot, mm-hmm. and that God God isn't going to change somebody unless we don't have. Oh God, I'm getting in trouble. If you don't have an LED wall, <laughs> if you don't have, <laughs> yeah, my God, because the structure and the in the institution and the systems. We think that these things work. It's not that stuff. That stuff don't work. It's it's that stuff helps, but that stuff don't work. No. You know what works? You cannot in entertain a person into heaven. You can't. I'm sorry. And the thing is, and I'm glad you said that because the Lord has been dealing with me with that whole aspect of entertainment. Because We'll get on our phones. We'll scroll TikTok. We'll scroll Instagram. We'll scroll. We'll scroll. We'll scroll. Mm-hmm. We'll see something funny. Ha ha! Share it to everybody. Yeah. Ha ha! Share it to everybody. Ha ha! Share it to everybody. And the Lord literally convicted me. He was like, "We're so entertained that we're missing His presence. We're missing what He's doing in the land. We're missing what's actually going on in the spiritual realm because we're too busy being entertained." And it happens in the church too. Big time. We're so busy being entertained by the worship, being entertained by the bad sermons, being entertained by the the whole shouting and the fake shouting and the fake praise, all of these things that are entertainment, mm-hmm. but it's not feeling. Only thing that can fill you is the Holy Spirit. That's it. Like knowing this word inside and out, the first time. I'm really telling myself the first time I read through the Bible, um, cover to cover was like a couple years ago. Like I've known, like I I can pick this thing up, preach it left and right. I, I've, I've read this Bible so many times, but I've never read it like cover to cover. Okay. The first time I read it cover to cover, it blew my mind. And you know what stood out to me the most about the Bible? And this is going to shock a lot of people. It wasn't God. It was the characteristic of Satan mm. and how deceptive he is. And how, oh God, how his motive <laughs> is to keep us deceived, to keep us entertained, mm-hmm. to keep us blinded to what God is doing. Yeah. And the minute I read that, and I had a pastor. Um, I had a pastor on. Um, actually, Marcus's pastor. He he was on, um, and we talked about the es- we talked about um, the fundamentals of heaven, hell eschatology really really great episode probably like our most viewed or most listened podcast episode <clears throat> because he talked he talked he broke down revelation like mm. beautifully okay and when i read it and went back and listened to it i was like oh my gosh i'm really about to get in trouble here we got to get politics out of the church come on <laughs> what part of what part of herod can't save you beware the leaven of herod right Right. If we would actually just do what Jesus said, oh, he, my word. Hmm. Y'all want your life to be changed? Do what Jesus do said. What Jesus said. Follow Jesus. That's it. Follow me as I follow Christ. Every single person that he called a disciple, what he do? What was he? What he asked him to do? Leave follow everything and follow me. And so this idea of you can take everything you have and With follow, you, and Je- follow nah, Jesus. No, he said you are not worthy of me. Yo, he even put up, he put you and your mama up against each other. And he said, if you love her more than me, you're not worthy of me. Not worthy of it. But please tell me one more time that Jesus is love. (laughs) Jesus will literally have you abandon your mama. He will. And we put so much, we do so much 
we don't realize how the religion is an idol. We don't realize how all these different things are idols. I'm gonna throw something at you. I mean, I know. Trust me, I, I lived it. Mm-hmm. It was me. Yeah. This this was me. Like I. So you I idolized as a minister and me as a lesbian woman would, would end up in the, the same, same place in the same hell. But God, Man, but, but God, God. Look. come on. <laughs> But it's the truth. Yes, it's so It's the truth because our lifestyles were the same. Sin. Come on. That's just it. <laughs> that was, that's that's the sentence. That's the that's sentence. The that's the episode of sin. <laughs> our lifestyles were the same. That's it. And the only thing that was wrong about <laughs> what the wrong about it was like we hyphen or heighten the importance of the sin of homosexuality mm-hmm. while being blinded to the sin of religion. Right. As if they, as if he doesn't view them as, the same. Right, he views all the sin the same, and we'll and we'll say, oh no, there's big sins, there's little sins, that's out in the speck in the log. No, God, Jesus was saying to remove the speck out of your eye. What is that? That's a big log. I mean, not the speck out of your eye, the log out of your eye. That's a big piece of wood. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? That's a lot of sin in your life that you got to remove before you start trying to remove something else out of somebody else's eye. Right, but Why? you must believe when my vessel is clean, I'm coming for your speck. Right, right. Because the thing is, like, he wants that. He tells us that in the scripture. Bear our sins one to another. What? Mm-hmm. That's Bible. Yeah. That's Bible. It's like, how can any two or three agree unless what? We walk in what? Faith. <laughs> That's Bible. Yeah, but see, the problem is we have like, there's 33,000 denominations. We have 33,000 types of Different faith. Different ideologies. A faith. Yeah. What's faith? Well, faith doesn't, no, 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 no. This is faith. 